Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about substitution and with regards to integration. And to help you out, I'm going to remind you about the chain rule. So remember when we took the derivative and we took the derivative of a composite function? So what did this equal? We had two layers to deal with. So it equaled the derivative of the outside, and then we multiplied it by the derivative of the inside. When we do integrals, if you have a composite function of some sort, you have to do this thing called u substitution. Now the letter u is not specific. It could be any variable you wanted. It's common practice that most people use the letter u when we're doing this substitution stuff. Here's how you know when to do it. I want you to you look at the integrand. So what in the world's an integrand? It's this. When I have an integral, the integrand is this part right here, blah, 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 blah. And then you have the dx. So this thing is the integrand ooh, is this thing. So if you study that and you think, okay, I'm gonna ignore the integral and just think, what if I took the derivative? If it would require the chain rule, if it would require chain rule to take the derivative, then it's going to require u substitution to take the integral. That's a quick way of checking to see if you have to do something with u substitution. If you didn't know how to do chain rule, you'd be up a creek for taking the derivative. If you don't know how to do u substitution, same thing with integrals. You will not be able to do many, many of the integrals without u substitution. So let's jump into it. So you're going to just write down what I'm doing at first, and it won't make much sense what I'm doing, but I will show you. So we're going to write really small here that the u is going to equal, our u is going to represent what's on the inside of this function, which is 3x minus 4. Okay, so that whole thing is going to get replaced with u. So what I do now is I'm going to say, I'm going to go down here a little ways. Let's give yourself some room. And I'm going to say u to the fifth. But instead of dx, I want to write what dx equals. So here's how you do this. Take the derivative of both sides. So this is the derivative of u with respect to x. That's going to equal just a 3. And now if we treat this like a fraction, multiply both sides by dx. So it's du equals 3 dx. And then divide both sides by 3 du divided by 3 equals dx. Now we know what dx is. So instead of writing a dx here, I can write what dx equals, which is du over 3. And then this becomes, that 3 now can come to the outside of the, of the integral. 1 third integral of u to the fifth du. And now we just take the, the antiderivative like we've done before, u to the sixth over 6 plus c. And then the last step is Resubstitute in what we started with. So u equals this, this 3x minus 4. So you come back down here, so that's going to be 1 18th. And then u to the 6th is 3x minus 4 to the 6th plus c. So there's our answer. After we've taken the integral, you take the, what your u was and you plug it back in. Okay, let's try this one. So what's on the inside here? We've got a 6x squared and we have an x cubed plus 4. How do you know which one u is going to equal? Well, it's typically the one that's on the inside. Remember, it's kind of like our composite function. So I'm going to start with this and just give it a shot. x cubed plus 4. All right, so now du over dx is going to equal 3x squared. Now, I'm going to start skipping this step because what you're really going to end up doing is saying du equals and then that derivative, 3x squared dx. It's always gonna end up like this. And then in fact, you're always gonna have du divided by, 3x squared equals dx, divided by the derivative. So you, if I have here, there's a lot of you who are gonna go be able to go straight to this last step, because you're gonna get used to this pattern. You'll take, it's gonna be du over the derivative equals dx. Every time it works out like that. All right, let's now, now go back up here and start taking the integral. So I have the, integral of 6x squared, and now this is my u, so I have u to the fifth power, and then instead of a dx, I'm going to plug in what dx equals, which is this thing. Now here's how we know if we did it right, because that x squared right here is going to cancel with that x squared. That's how we know we did it right. And then it's 6 divided by 3 is 2, so I'm just going to put the 2 on the outside of the integral, and then all I have left is u to the fifth du. And now it's just like that problem before, right? Yeah, it's going to be 2u to the 6th over 6 plus c. So this becomes 1 third, and then u was x to the 3rd plus 4, and then plus c. So let me give you another hint of how you know if you're doing it right. When you choose your u, think ahead of what is the derivative. 3x squared, right? 3x squared. If you can think about that in your head, you want the x squareds, whatever the variables are, you want it to cancel. So 
there is an x squared that was already here and it was going to cancel. That's why x cubed plus four is a great choice. Okay, that might be confusing what I'm saying right now. I will talk about that every single problem on all the rest of these examples so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, let's go here. Let's choose u equals, and now it's a little confusing, which one is u square root of x or is the u square root of x minus one? I always try to go with the thing that's on the inside of the inside, but I'll show you how else you can check that. So that's what my u is going to be. Now, what is the derivative of this? The derivative, so I'm gonna to jump to this, du, instead of du over dx, I'm just going over here, one over two square root of x, dx. Now that's perfect because I have a square root of x on bottom and right there is a square root of x on bottom. That's gonna make it cancel. So that's what you're looking for. When I say think ahead a step, that's how you'll know if your u was a good choice. Okay, so let's see here. This becomes two square root of x du equals dx. And now we can go up here and start plugging things in. So this is u squared, that whole thing was my u, all over the square root of x. Nothing's canceled yet. Now my dx is this thing, two square root of x du. Square root of x cancels, square root of x cancels. The two will come to the front. So it's two u squared du. And now we take the integral just like normal. And after you have the integral, then you substitute back in what your u was, what we started with, which was the square root of x minus one. And there's our answer. All right, let's do a couple more of these before we do some other weird ones. So this is a great example of thinking ahead a step. Do you want your u to equal sine x or do you want your u to equal cosine x or do you want your u to equal e to the cosine x? Because if it would logically make sense, one of those would make sense. So here's how I would tell you to do this. Okay, don't write this down yet. I'm gonna show you the wrong example. If I chose sine x, which is wrong, but if I chose it, what's the derivative of that? It's cosine x. And while there's a cosine x there, you're gonna, you would end up dividing by cosine x, right? That's what your dx is going to equal, du over the derivative. And so when you substitute this with du over cosine x, it doesn't cancel that. This is u, but nothing simplifies here. So that would be a very bad choice. Now, if we do this, if we say u is cosine x, which you can write this down because this is the right way to do this, this would be du over negative sine. Remember the derivative of cosine is negative sine equals dx, and now we can start getting some things to cancel. That's perfect, because this sine x is on top, this sine x is on bottom, it's going to end up canceling. So let's write this out, sine x e to the u, because cosine x is my u substitution, and then dx is du over negative sine x. So now my sine x is canceled. I still have that little minus sign though, so I gotta, I'm gonna bring that to the front. So it's a negative e to the u du, and now what is that? It's just negative e to the u, which was cosine x, plus c. Okay, I can see I've got an inside here, so I'm just gonna change that right away. u equals three x. du over three is going to equal dx. So I just skipped some steps there, right? It's gonna be du over the derivative of that. If you don't like skipping that step, then just write it out long ways until you get your dx by itself. Okay, so then this is going to be uh, cotangent of u du over three. So the problem with this is, I'm gonna bring that one third out here, cotangent u, we don't have an integral for that. We don't know what the integral of cotangent u is. So watch how we do this. We're gonna rewrite it as cosine u over sine u du. And now with this one, we can do u substitution again. So we've already done u substitution once, we're gonna do it a second time. What happens when you have u substitution twice? It's two times u or it's double u substitution, <laughs> double u substitution. Oh, I think that's just so funny. Okay, so now we're gonna do the u substitution just again. So I use double u. So double u is gonna equal, well, now let's think about this, which one do I want? If I say u, if I say w is cosine, its derivative is sine, which is there, but it's on bottom. I wanna do it the other way around. I wanna say w is sine u, so that that way I get dw over its derivative, which is cosine u, equals du. And now that way it's gonna cancel. Okay, good. So one third, I'm gonna show you here, this is gonna go where that du is, so that cosine u is gonna cancel with that cosine u. So all I have left is one over sine u, which I said was w, so that's gonna be w, and then this is just dw. Okay, so now I have one third, and now the antiderivative of this is the natural log 
of the absolute value of W. But W was sine U, so sine U, and U was 3x absolute value, plus C. So that one's a bit more confusing because you had multiple layers that we were doing, but just like chain rule, you might have more layers than just one to work with. All right, next up is a couple tricky examples, and I'm throwing these here because you will see them just once in a while, but I at least wanted to touch base with you so you can see how these work. So let's say that U is going to equal the inside of this, which is just the X plus one, what's underneath the radical. So then this is just gonna be that DU equals, the derivative of that is just DX, right? So that's all I have. So I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna have a problem because this is the square root of U, and then DX is just DU. See, I don't have anything that's going to help the X cancel. There's nothing left here. So this happens once in a while. One of the strategies you can use is to take this right here, and let's come down here and solve for x. Subtract one from both sides, I get u minus one equals x. So if that's what x equals, I can take that x right there and say that it's u minus one over the square root of u, du. And now that is equivalent to, this is what we learned in one of a couple of our last lessons. You can separate this rational so that it looks like this, and then you just go from there. I'm gonna have this pop up here real quick because you've seen this before. Okay, so there's our answer. And I showed you some of my work here if you want to pause to be able to get that written out. Sorry, I ran out of room on this, so just be careful about that. I might have to erase this for my next example. So now we're doing inverse trig. So this you may not immediately recognize as inverse trig, and the tendency is to immediately jump to U substitution. Like the, the, this is going to be in this lesson because I find that when kids are doing the AP exam and they miss these problems because they think it's a U substitution one, and so I want to show you why it's not. If I said that u equals 1 minus 4x squared, then the problem is that it would be du over the derivative of this, which is negative 8x, equals dx, and then there's no x here. There's no x in the, in the numerator to make it cancel with this when I substitute it in. So I would have a problem. That's because you have to recognize, I'm going to erase this, that this is actually an inverse trig problem. And if I rewrite it so that it's 1 minus, and then it's 2x quantity squared underneath that radical. That might help you see it a little bit. So now let's do our u substitution. u is going to equal 2x. So then du is, or excuse me, dx is going to equal du over two. And now I can go over here and say, this is square root of one minus u squared. And then dx is du over two. So the one half comes to the very front, one half. And then this is square root subtraction with the one first. So that is sine inverse of u, but we already know what u is, which was 2x, plus c. Okay, we've covered everything with indefinite integrals. Now, we got to do definite integrals, and I'm going to be real honest with you, I would have split this up into two totally different lessons, because this is a lot of information. I know it's a long one, and the packet's a little bit longer, too. Uh, I would have if I was teaching this, probably most of your teachers would separate this to two lessons, but stinking College Board, thank you very much. They put this all condensed into one lesson. So blame College Board, sorry. So let's do this. It's very similar to what we were already doing. So I'm gonna say that U is going to equal, what's on the inside here is T cubed plus one. Now the derivative of that is gonna be three T squared. So T squared, perfect. I've got a T squared there, so it will cancel. So I've got du equals 3t squared dt, not dx this time. So then I get du over 3t squared equals dt. So let's start substituting some things in. So we take our integral. Now this is what's cool about this. Before, when we were done, we took our u and we substituted it in what u equaled, right? We substituted it back in. But for these problems, you don't have to do that because our final answer is going to be a numerical value, right? We're gonna plug the two in, plug the zero in, and go from there. So what we're going to do is change these boundaries. When we do U substitution, we change the boundaries by taking our U substitution right here, and we take zero and plug it in. So my new boundary, I'll write it in red so you can see it, zero cubed plus one is one. And then you take the two, plug it in, two cubed is eight, plus one gives us nine. So now we have new boundaries for us to work with, and that's gonna actually speed this up, which you'll see here in just a little bit. Let me continue writing this out. So I've, uh, that's the square root of u, right? Cause that's, yep, that's my u substitution. And then my dt is du over three t squared. Okay, let's see here, what cancels? t squared, 
T squared cancels. I've got this three on bottom that can come to the front. So I'm gonna have one third from one to nine. So I've changed my boundaries. I'm no longer doing zero to two. I'm doing totally new boundaries, but that's gonna be great. Gonna speed my problem up. And then this is u to the one half du. Now we take the integral just like normal, which you've done lots of times. So you end up with something that looks like this. And now the nice thing is you do not have to take this t cubed plus one and plug it back into u. The reason you don't have to is because we already took care of that with the new boundaries. It's like we did plug it in, right? That We plug these numbers into this u substitution, so the boundaries changed. So now we go straight to our answer of 2 ninths integral, and now plug the 9 in, subtract the 1 plugged in. And just as a reminder for the arithmetic part of this, take the square root first, right? This 2 on bottom means square root, so square root of 9 is 3, and then 3 cubed is 27. That makes it a lot easier. So this is 26 times 2 ninths, or in other words, double 26, 52 ninths. And I don't think that reduces, but even if it did, it doesn't matter. This is not a calculator problem, so we could just leave that as is, even if it did simplify. That one doesn't, though. Okay, last problem then. So I would like you to try this one on your own. I will have all the steps very clearly written out here in just a minute, but it's a great practice. Try it on your own. See if you can figure out which one is your use substitution and which one's not, and then... Uh, follow the steps I did here where you change the boundary. Okay, so good luck on this one. And here's our answer of two-thirds. So you can kind of look through my work, see what I did. I changed my boundaries from zero to power over two to zero one. But I, you had to start off with u equals sine x. If you didn't get that one for your u substitution, that would have thrown the rest of this one off. Okay, so we've covered everything now. I know that was a long one, but boy, we had a lot of the material in this. Go through that practice, check your answers, rock that master check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.